Thanks for joining us for the rebroadcast of this past Sunday service from the chapel at Ocean Reef. Let me just say a word to you about our services during Holy Week. If you're at Ocean Reef on Thursday, the 6th of April, we're going to be having a tenebrae service of darkness and Holy Communion. That will be at 7 o'clock in the evening, 7 p.m. We hope you'll join us for this important service as we prepare to celebrate the joy of Easter together. But now this morning, our guest artist and speaker is Huntley Brown. Huntley is a gifted Jamaican-born pianist. He has traveled the world over with the Billy Graham organization. He literally taught himself how to play as a child in Jamaica, listening to people on the radio. Well, when he plays the Lord's Prayer this morning at the conclusion of the service, you'll get just a sense of his artistry. But he has a wonderful message to bring to us from the life of Gideon in the book of Judges. I know it's going to be a wonderful morning together, so now let's join the service. God is good. All, and all the time, God is good. One more time, God is good. God is good. And all the time, God is good. We do serve a great, wonderful God. You know, I believe anyone can worship God when the sound is working great. But if you can worship God when Putin is blowing the place up or the sound is not working as great, then you are a true praise and worshiper. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for you simply being you being a great, wonderful, powerful, awesome, mighty God. Speak through these lips of clay. Allow me, Lord, to proclaim your words in such a way that life will be transformed for your kingdom. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, amen. Now, I became a professional musician in Jamaica at the age of 16. I worked for one week and got fired. <laughs> now, who would want to fire me? <laughs> Pastor Bob, you know I'm a nice guy. You know, I I'm a good guy, but they fired me after one week. And the manager called me to a meeting and he said to me, we are sorry, we have to let you go because you are not ready yet. Now, I did not argue with my firing. I simply went back to my place of residence, and was there for a while. Shortly after that, I got another call. Another manager called me from a different band, and he said, I would like for you to come and work with our band. And I said to him, I would love to, but I can't. And he said, why not? I said, well, the last band fired me. They told me I was not ready yet. And then he uttered words that literally changed my life. He said, do not worry. I am going to help you. And he said to me, I see the best in you. And friends, I have a question for you this morning. Who saw the best in you? Who believed in you? Who prayed for you, invested in you, so that you could be a success? Now, I believe... If they're still alive, it's time to say thank you one more time. Say thank you to those people who saw the best in you. You know, friends, success never happens in isolation. There are people who come alongside us and help us all to get to the place where we need to get to. Open your Bibles to Judges chapter 6, verse 11 to 12. Judges 6, verse 11 to 12 says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joas the Abyssalite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. I am sure when Gideon heard those words, mighty warrior, he's looking around. Mighty who, where? This is wonderful. We are looking for a mighty warrior. And then all of a sudden, Gideon realized the angel was talking about him. The angel was saying, Gideon, God sees the best in you. 
and God has a plan for your life. No, Gideon is here wrestling with what he's hearing. Why? Because the nation was in trouble. And Gideon knew they were in trouble. And Gideon now has a few questions. Listen to Gideon's question in Judges chapter 6, verse 13. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, Why has all this happened to us? Where are all these wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But no, the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Binian. Now Gideon was saying, God, if you are with us, where is the proof? But God wanted Gideon to remember this phrase. Failure is an event not a person. Let me say that once more. Failure is an event, not a person. Everybody say that with me. Failure is an event, not a person. You might have made some mistakes. We have all made mistakes. We have all done things we are not proud of. But God is saying to all of us this morning, I see the best in you because I put the best in you. And friends, Gideon, all he had to do was read verse 1. And verse 1 would explain to him what had happened. Verse 1 of Judges 6 says, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Now God was saying to Gideon, Oh, Gideon, that's true. But Gideon, I want you to forget the past. Forget about what happened before. I want you to write a new memory that in 2023, Pastor Bob and Huntley Brown will be talking and sharing your story of what I did through you because I saw the best in you. You know, friends, you must remember this. God never consults your past to determine your future. Let me say that once more. God never consults your past to determine your future. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Psalm 130 verse 3 says this. No, Lord, if you kept a record of wrongs, who could stand? None of us could stand if God kept a record of wrongs. But God is saying to all of us, in spite of all the failures, in spite of all the wrongdoing, he's saying, I have a plan for you. And that's exactly what God said to Gideon. And God was saying to Gideon, Gideon, I have a purpose for you. You are here for a specific purpose. And friends, as the saying goes, last night at dinner, we were talking about our, our dear friend, Dr. Miles Monroe, who went to meet the Lord. Dr. Monroe had a saying many years ago. He said, the greatest tragedy in life is to be alive and don't know why. The greatest tragedy in life is to be alive and don't know why. And he's right. You see, friends, we are all here in spite of our age, social status, because God has a plan for us right now. And the question is, God, what is your plan for our lives right now? And Gideon is saying, God, okay, what are you saying to me? And the Lord said, Gideon, I am going to tell you. Verse 14, Judges 6, verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Now Gideon said, what? Lord, and I can see Gideon say, okay, God, you made a mistake. God, the creator of the universe, made a mistake. And, God, and Gideon said, God, let me tell you why I know you made a mistake. <laughs> Judges chapter 6, verse 15 says, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Gideon was saying to God, God, you don't understand. My family is the least in the whole country. And if it could not get any worse, any worse, I am at the bottom. 
I am the least in my family. Now think about this, friends. Gideon saying, God, I am the least. God is saying, mighty warrior. No, God, I am the least. Mighty warrior. How do you see yourself this morning? You might be here saying, well, you know, Huntley, I'm smiling on the outside. I look good. I go home. My bills are paid. But internally, I'm wrestling. I'm struggling. I see myself as a failure. Or maybe I made some mistakes. My kids don't like me anymore. Grandkids are running. And God is saying to you this morning, I sent my servant, Huntley Brown, to let you know I love you. I have great plans for you. And your mistakes does not define who you are. And God was saying to Gideon, Gideon, yes, the nation made some mistakes. But this morning, Gideon, I want you to go and rescue the whole country. And Gideon is here saying, me, the least. And God is saying, yes. And God answered Gideon, and I love this next verse. Verse 16 says this. The Lord answered, I will be with you. Wow, friends, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. There is nothing in the world like knowing God is with you. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, I know um, our dear friend um, Amy, um, who was our you know, chaperone here, her husband is going through a very difficult time right now with some kind of brain cancer. She's going through a tough time. But I want Amy to know that God is with you. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. I know Barbie lost your husband many years ago, you know, too. And so, even so, in spite of the challenge, God wants you to know, I am never going to leave you or forsake you. A couple of years ago, I was on the internet, and I saw this picture, and I just love this picture. It says, when people say, you and what army? Oh, I just love that picture. You know, you, you might be in a deal or business deal or whatnot, and somebody's saying, you and what army is going to take me on? And they don't know behind you that God has angels watching over you, protecting you to keep you in all your ways. Now, Gideon gets convinced that God wants to use him. Now, God comes to Gideon and says, Gideon, I, maybe God is saying, okay, Giddy, come here, Giddy. You know, you, know, you all have those pet names for people now. You know, if, if my mother says Hunt, I'm okay. If my mother says Hunter Brown, yes, mom. <laughs> I can see, you know, Gideon just say, okay, Lord, God, what do you want now? And the Lord said, Gideon, I have an assignment for you. Judges 6, verse 25 to 26. That same night, the Lord said to him, take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. Wow. God was asking Gideon to do something that was going to put his life in danger. Not only that, Gideon was going to be afraid of his family and the town's people. What do you do when God asks you to do something that you don't agree with? And you're like, God, are you sure I cannot do this, God? You, you know, maybe you're here this morning and there's a relative you have not spoken to in many years. And they hurt you pretty badly. Maybe they ripped you off. And you're saying, God, I can't forgive this person. God, if you strengthen me, give me a two by four, I can take it to their head. Yes, God, that, that, that feels more like it. But maybe God is saying to you, yes, I know they hurt you, but I want you to forgive that person this morning. You're saying, God, I just can't do that. God's saying, don't worry. I will come alongside you and I will help you. In the case of Gideon, God was saying, Gideon, I want you to go against your family and your nation. This is a tough assignment. And friends, I love what Gideon did. Verse 27 says this. So Gideon took 10 of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family, and the town's people. He did it at night rather than in the daytime. Now, friends, 
Pastor Bob, I have no problems with that. I'll be honest. You know, I, I, you see, God didn't say to Gideon, Gideon, do it at night or do it in the day. God simply said, get it done. Now, friends, how about you this morning? Is God asking you to do something very difficult? You know, a couple years ago, I was in grad school at Northern Illinois University. I said, God, I want you to use me. And um, I said, okay, Lord, anyone you show me, I'm going to talk to about Jesus. I was ready to go. All of a sudden, the Lord pointed at a young man and said, talk to him about me. I'm like, no, no, mm -mm. no, no, Lord, no, uh, not him. No, you have to understand, guys. My friend Ken, he was on campus, unbelievable musician. Now, Ken was Jewish. He didn't believe like I did at the time. And Ken was on drugs. You, you, you ever seen those guys who walk around like, you know, like this? I'm telling you, man, God is good. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. That was Ken. And I said, God, you want me to talk to Ken? No way. He's not going to accept what I have to say. I got worried. But what did I do? I obeyed. We started a conversation. And Ken was receptive to what I had to say. And as time went on, Ken accepted the Lord. And you know, it was amazing about our Jewish brothers and sisters. When they read the Bible, it's more alive to them than us because it's our part of their heritage. And Ken, the Bible was coming to life. He said, wow, now I understand. Now, no friends, I would have lost a blessing if I had not obeyed God. And maybe you might be here this morning saying, well, I believe God is talking to me about talking to my neighbor and I'm worried. Friends, sometimes it's not what you say. We call it friendship evangelism. Just be there for the person. Let them know you love them. Let them know you're here to pray for them. You don't have to be a Billy Graham overnight. Just take your time or bring them to Pastor Bob saying, you know what? I might not know how to explain everything, but I have a wonderful pastor here who can talk with you, who can pray with you. So friends, whatever God is saying to you this morning, don't be afraid. Simply obey. And so God said to Gideon, do this. And Gideon got it done. Now, I can imagine Gideon having a sleepless night, wondering what is going to happen when I wake up tomorrow morning. It's not going to be good. And he was right. Verse 28 to 29 says this. In the morning, when the people of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demolished, with the Asherah pole beside the cut down, and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Josh, did this. Now what were they going to do? Verse 30 answers this question. The people of the town demanded of Josh, bring out your son, he must die because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pool beside it. Now, friends, God gave Gideon an assignment that put his life in danger. And I'm sure Gideon is saying, God, do you know what you're asking me to do? Do you understand the danger I'm going to be in? But God said, Gideon, don't worry. I am going to be with you. And friends, I love what Gideon's father did. Gideon's father decided he was going to protect his son. Listen to verse 31. But Joash replied to the hostile crowd around him, are you going to plead Baal's case? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning, but if Baal is really God, he can defend himself. When somebody breaks down his altar, verse 32. So because Gideon broke down Baal's altar, they gave him the name Jerub Baal. They're saying, let Baal contend with him. Now, friends, I love what Gideon's father did here. I am sure Gideon's father was not happy that Gideon had broken down his altar. But even so, he decided to protect his son. And I've said this many times, my wife and myself, we have four beautiful daughters. Natalie, Natasha, Nicole, 
and Nadia. My wife says the next one is called No More. <laughs> so we have four wonderful daughters, and I'll tell you, I made a decision. No one is going to hurt our kids. I made a decision, you know, I have a black belt, as you could tell from the kick in the video, I do have a black belt. I am going I to protect my, my kids at all, at all costs. And here's what I said to everyone, okay, even if my kids are wrong, I'm going to protect them. What do I mean by this? Now, when we get home, there'll be consequences for sure. But even if there are consequences, I want my kids to know that I love them, that no one on the outside is going to hurt them because even though they might have done something wrong, I'm going to protect them and nurse them back to health. That's what God expects from all of us, not to condone what they did. And many times people say to me, Huntley, so what should I do? Always remember this. Operate with the two C's. Compassion without compromise. Compassion without compromise. I'm going to say to you, you know what? I'm going to be here for you, but I'm not going to condone what you, you did. Now, I've been with the Billy Graham Association since 1989, I think I started. Many, many years. And it's been the honor of my life. The last couple of years, apart from working with the Franklin Graham team, I also work with Dr. Graham's daughter, Ruth. And at Dr. Graham's funeral, his daughter, Ruth, shared a testimony. After I said, Ruth, you messed up a perfectly good funeral because we're all crying. <laughs> but, you know, instead of me sharing Ruth's story, I brought a short video clip. I want Ruth to share her story, what happened and what Billy Graham did yeah, first. My own Billy Graham story. So I'm going to tell you that one. And I've told it many times, and some of you have maybe heard it many times. But it bears repeating because, to me, it speaks to the essence of who my father was and is. After 21 years, my marriage ended in divorce. I was devastated. I floundered. I did a lot wrong. The rug was pulled out from under me. My family thought it'd be a good idea for me to move away to get a fresh start somewhere else. So I decided to live near my older sister and her family and near a good church. The pastor of that church introduced me to a handsome widower and we began to date fast and furiously. My children didn't like him, but I thought, you know, they were almost grown. They didn't know what they could, they couldn't tell me what to do. I knew what was best for my life. My mother called me from Seattle. My father called me from Tokyo. They said, honey, why don't you slow down? Let us wait to get to know this man. They had never been a single parent. They had never been divorced. What did they know? So being stubborn, willful, and sinful, I married a man, this man, on New Year's Eve. And within 24 hours, I knew I'd made a terrible mistake. After five weeks, I fled. I was afraid of him. What was I going to do? I wanted to go talk to my mother and my father. It was a two-day drive. Questions swirled in my mind. What was I going to say to daddy? What was I going to say to mother? What was I going to say to my children? I'd been such a failure. What were they going to say to me? You, we, we're tired of fooling with you. We told you not to do it. You've embarrassed us. And let me tell you, you women will understand you don't want to embarrass your father. You really don't want to embarrass Billy Graham. <laughs> and many of you know that we live on the side of a mountain. And as I wound myself up the mountain, I rounded the last bend in my father's driveway, and my father was standing there waiting for me. As I got out of the car, he wrapped his arms around me and he said, welcome home. There was no shame, there was no blame, there was no condemnation, just unconditional love. And you know, my father was not God, but he showed me what God was like that day. When we come to God with our sin, our brokenness, our failure, our pain and our hurt, God says, welcome home. And that invitation is open for you. Welcome home. 
That's what God does for all of us. And this morning in closing, I do not know where you are in life, what you're going through, but God wants you to know he sees the best in you. And he also wants you to let your friends, your grandkids, and family members know that God sees the best in them and will never leave them or forsake them. There's a songwriter by the name of Marvin Sapp who wrote a song that captures what Ruth just mentioned and what I'm trying to talk about this morning. The song says, he saw the best in me when everyone else around could only see the worst in me. He's mine and I am his. It does not matter what I did. He only sees me for who I am. He saw the best in me because there are some folks in here who wrote you off, said you would never amount to anything, said that you would never end up anywhere. When mama said you'd never be nothing, when aunties and uncles said you'd never amount to anything, when daddy did not come home anymore. God didn't look at you and say that you're not going to make it. God looked at you. And what did he see? He saw the best. The same my daughter gave me some time ago that said this. Your value does not decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. This morning, God sees the best in you. And he sees the best in me. And he has a plan for all of us. Shall we pray? Father, thank you, God, that you see the best in us. Thank you, Father God, that you never give up on us. You never consult our past to determine our future. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder that failure is an event, not a person. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God, for this church. And Father God, I pray right now for my brothers and sisters here. Lord, I do not know what they're going through. I do not know those here, Father God, who are saying, I cannot take another step. But I pray, Lord, that they will know that, God, you see the best in them and you have a purpose for their life right now. And I give you thanks and praise for the breakthrough your people are going to experience this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. In closing, I'm going to do something different. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll skip the track. The track's not working well. Um, I was planning to do this song, but I'm going to do a special number on the piano. You all know the Lord's Prayer. And what you're going to hear in the middle, you're going to hear the line that says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You're going to hear a sound coming from the piano describing evil. It's going to get loud. But don't worry, I won't leave you there. I am also going to describe for you the victory that we have in our wonderful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again in the future. Let's worship in the Lord's Prayer.